question 16 now. We've got a fraction and we've got lots of operations. What do we do first and where do we go? Well, I'm going to do this, you see. I'm going to do this. That equals something over something, doesn't it? So I'm going to calculate, you know, the top and then the bottom and then I'm going to put the two numbers in here and then I'm going to get the answer, right? So again, I'm working step by step. So if I take the top, it's negative 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 squared, okay? And just on its own, I'm going to calculate the top on one side of the page, on one part of the page. Now, what operations do we have here? We have subtraction, multiply, and exponents. Which do we do first? Well, there's no parentheses. Then we go to exponents. We, we have exponents. Again, we have this situation with a cu uh, an exponent on a number, on and looks like a negative number, but the, the negative part is not contained inside the exponent. So, again, just want to show you the difference between negative 3 cubed and a negative 3 cubed like that. These are two different things, okay? In fact, they're both going to give the same answer. But this one, just so you know, means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which eventually gives negative 27. This one just means negative 3 times 3 times 3 because in this case the cube is just touching the 3. So that's why it's just 3 times 3 times 3. See that? And the negative sign is in front. Okay? So there's two different ways. Now that once when you have a cube number, of course, when, when it's cubed it, it's going to give you the same answer anyway. But when it's squared of course it doesn't. So you got to watch out. Anyway, just a point on that. So negative 3 cubed, let's see, 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, so then we're left with negative 27, right? And then we have minus 2 times, and then we've got another exponent to take care of here. And, and what does he become? He becomes 9, right? So now we have some a subtractions and a multiplication, right? negative 27, then minus, and then we have a 2 times 9. What's 2 times 9? 18, right? So we multiply, don't we? And then we go on to the subtractions. Negative 27 minus 18, what's that? You're in debt by $27 on your credit card, and then you spend $18 more. How, how much are, are you in debt now? You're in debt by 45, right? So this whole top of the fraction becomes negative 45. Now I need to calculate the bottom of the fraction. And again, I'm going to use lots of paper. I'm going to write things out step by step, take my time, use order of operation so I don't make a mistake. Because it's very easy to make a mistake on things like this. And I'll, I'll tell you what's more. Okay, so let's write out the, other, the bottom of the fraction. 8 divided by 2 squared minus parentheses 6 minus the absolute value of 2 minus 15. Okay. Now, very easy to make a mistake on this again, of course, isn't it? So we've got to take our, take our time. I'm going to do this parenthesis, because if, oh, let, let's, if we go through the order of operations on, on this, right? We've got to do parentheses first. Now, if I look at this, okay, I've got to do this guy, don't I? And inside here, I have to do some things. So to be honest, I'm going to take that whole thing, and I'm going to work it, uh, uh, down here, and then I'm going to pack, put it back in again. I think that that that's it. It just looks nicer to me if I did it like that. So down here, I'm just going to go. Okay, you got six minus absolute value two minus fifteen, right? So to calculate this thing, what's two minus fifteen? We've got to do this first to get the absolute value, right? Two minus fifteen. I have two dollars. I subtract fifteen. I'm in debt by thirteen, right? So 6 minus absolute value of negative 13. What's the absolute value of negative 13? Absolute value just makes all numbers positive, so that's 13, right? 6 minus 13, what's that? Negative 7. Right? So this parenthesis, this thing inside here became negative 7, right? So I'm going to put that back up here and then write out this whole thing. 8 divided by 2 squared minus negative 7. OK? 
Okay, very important to write that, put the parentheses there, and see now I have two negatives, because this became negative seven, and this subtract sign comes down. So watch out for that. Anyway, what do we do now? We use our order of operations. Okay, parentheses, nothing to do really. Uh, exponents, yes, I have a two squared. What's two squared? Four, right? So eight divided by four minus negative seven. Just write it out, doesn't take long, doesn't take long. Now I have a division and I have subtraction. What do I do next? Division, right? What's 8 divided by 4? 2. So 2 minus negative 7. What's 2 minus negative 7? You have $2 and a, a bill of $7 has been cancelled, taken away. You're taking away 7 negatives. That's a good thing. Also, negative negative is the same thing as plus plus. 2 plus positive 7 is 9. So this entire bottom was worked out to be the number 9. I put that here. So everything is done step by step. I take my time, look at the order of operations. Everything is done step by step. The top became 45. The bottom became 9. Now I just have to make sure I don't make a mistake here and then I'll have the right answer. So what's negative 45 divided by 9? That would be negative number, right? Negative 5. 